Hi, my name is Amber. My family and I live in western Pennsylvania and we have about two acres where we grow vegetables, where we raise our goats and chickens and we have rabbits. Um, we have a couple dogs. Anyway, I am a knitter and a spinner and just a general lover of crafty things. I also enjoy time in the kitchen. I love gardening and I, I do see my interests shift a lot just depending on the seasons because we do have all four seasons here in western Pennsylvania. So in the summer, the spring and summer, I don't knit as much and I definitely don't spin. I spend a lot of time outside. Um, I garden. I love to grow flowers and herbs and vegetables and I, I just love being outside. Um, so just I don't really have make the time to knit during the summer but then in the fall and winter like most knitters and crafters you know our attention shifts inward because it gets cold here where I live anyway and that's when I start getting the itch to to knit and to spin and just to you know be cozy inside um, I've lived in this area my entire life but <laughs> I still really have to encourage myself to embrace winter and the shorter days. And I was kind of thinking a lot about that um, this morning actually. You know, I'm always kind of late to the game with certain things, which I think you'll kind of see that in my podcast today, but I've been hearing a lot of people, knitters and non-knitters, um, just talking about Huga which is the Danish word that it just kind of embodies coziness. And I was doing a little bit of research on what it, exactly it means. And, you know, the Danes have very long, cold winters with short days. And so, um, according to what I was reading, which I looked on several sites, they developed just this frame of mind because it helped them to get through their long winters. And I thought, you know, that's just what I need to do. I needed to just embrace this time because I find myself feeling a little bit claustrophobic in the winter. It's cold and we have snow and ice and um, so I just find myself wanting to stay in where every other time of the year I like to go do things. I like to visit places, sightsee. Um, not so much this time of year though. So I thought, you know what, I want to really work on adapting this mind frame of Huga and just really trying to enjoy the winter season and just the rest that it allows and just being able to be in more and um, because let's face it if it was always nice and if it was always warm I probably wouldn't get a lot of knitting done because I just don't make the time to sit down in the summer I'm very active in the warmer months just doing stuff outside so yeah so I need to embrace that and um, I wanted to do this podcast because I just I really enjoy watching other podcasts um, I have some favorites that I just get really excited about when they come on and I thought you know what I'm just gonna try my hand at it mostly because I just like to jump in and try new things that's kind of how we got started with our homesteading journey you know, I had been thinking, oh, I'd like to have alpacas because I was a knitter and I wanted to learn how to spin. This was four or five years ago. Uh, we did eventually get alpacas. We had them for four years and we just rehomed them this past spring. I had to have a sur some surgery done and um, we just decided that it would be easier for us to rehome them before the surgery. But they're only about 20, the farm that they're at now is about 20 minutes away and she's a friend of mine and she is just such a lover of animals so I feel really it was like really sad for me to see them go it really was because they were they were mostly just my pets um, but at the same time I know that they have a wonderful loving farm that they're on now and because they're only 20 minutes I can go see them whenever I want I haven't yet because I'm not sure how I would feel but Hopefully in the spring I will work up the nerve to drive over there and see them.
And I'm just curious to see if they'll actually remember me. Um, so, so I think what I want to do today, this is going to be a short episode because I've never done this before. I, you know, I've, I'm using my Nikon, which in the past I've only ever just shot still photos with it. So this is kind of all an experiment. I have no idea how to edit videos. So I'm going to be learning how to do that as well with this whole process. But again, sometimes you just have to jump in and try something and see how it goes. So um, I do want to say I have an Instagram account and my name on there is Amber underscore Helena. And I will put that down like in below on YouTube here, if, the link for that, if you would like to check that out. And my husband and I are also working on setting up a blog which will be a variety of things I'll be posting about. I have a blog already. It's called Making a Home. I've had it since 2008. But I lost direction on it and kind of got uninspired and unfocused with it. So I haven't posted on it for several months. And this, um, this new website we have, I'm really hoping that I can be a little more focused. And I have some different ideas for it. So I'm launching that sometime this month. And I guess if I'm, you know, I can let you know when that happens, if I decide this podcasting thing is for me. So let's get started, I guess, with some knitting, because this is going to be a knitting podcast. Um, I may show some other things around, or to you as well, but, so I want to just show you a couple things that I have finished recently. Um, these socks are this yarn is stunning actually my daughter bought me this yarn it's yarn at home mom and I think it was in the spring or maybe it was even last year she put out a colorway called Anne of Green Gables I love Anne of Green Gables and so does my daughter and I think we had just finished watching that series anyway this these this is the Hermione's everyday sock pattern I don't know let me see Oh, see, this is all going to be a learning experience as far as figuring out how to get things to focus. So let me see if I can figure that out. There we go. Yeah, so this yarn is so pretty. It's got some of my favorite colors um, in it. And so, yeah, the only thing I did different with this pattern is I did a, a one by one rib. I'm going to focus back on me and have to autofocus stuff. See, I guess I have to learn how to use my camera better while I'm videoing. So I just did the um, one by one rib instead of, I think it might call for a two by two. But that's the only thing different I did. And these are, and this yarn is just so nice and soft. So that's one pair of socks. And then the other pair of socks, actually, they're my Christmas socks. And I cast these on like a week and a half before Christmas. And we took a vacation, a staycation. My husband takes off around Christmas time every year, which means because I'm a homeschool mom, um, we don't, when my husband takes off, we take off. We don't do our school lessons when he's off usually. So I also had a, a week long vacation. This is the last day of vacation. It's kind of sad, but we're actually kind of ready to get back to our routine all the same. And Anyway, a week and a half ago, I cast on these, and I, Regina, if you watch this, which I don't know if you will or not, but I'm going to totally mispronounce your um, yarn brand name, Herbsblatt, Regina. I, I am horrible. I am so horrible, especially with German, because <laughs> I, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, again, I will try to put a link in down below, but this is in her Spitzbuben. Again, I probably totally butchered that. And then I just did a contrasting heel in purple using on the round um, a yarn. She had done a second sale a couple years ago, and I just bought a bunch of different solids to, to have for like the um, heels and toes. I don't typically put a contrasting cuff on. But again, like this is, it's a micro striping. So it's really fun. It's a re it was a really fun Christmas knit. 
I was going to put a green toe in, and then I thought, no, because that's a little too Christmassy for me, and I want to be able to wear these all year. So that's what we got there. So that was two pairs of socks in December. I was happy with that. Um, and then I also have been making these simple house slippers, which I made my daughter a pair. And then this is my third pair, I think. I'm not sure who these are going to go to yet. They're like a tweedy gray color, and honestly, this is just some, I think it's like just a commercial brand. I got it at Michael's, um, mostly because I was making some of these to give away for gifts, and although I am willing to hand wash my hand knits, I know that that's not something everybody, you know, really wants to spend their time doing, so when I give a gift, I do try to either make something out of superwash or I will make it out of a commercial yarn that I know won't shrink or felt if they would accidentally or you know if they don't want to have to worry about hand washing. So I just think these are like so darling and um, I'm not sure, kind of, the funny thing is is when I knit stuff like when I've in, in the past when I've knitted socks and even with these slippers I've been noticing as I knit it's like God puts somebody on my mind to gift them to because every pair of socks that I have gifted to someone, I didn't set out thinking, oh, I'm going to make these for this person or I'm going to make them for that person. It's like as I knit them, I get, I just get that person's uh, name on my mind. And so it's, I take it as a sign from God that they need some knit love. So send them those socks. And that's always really fun for me. I really like that. And some socks, like I, I knit my sister a pair and I had bought the yarn when we were in Maine. I had bought the yarn from Knitwit, I think it was. And um, it was a really nice green and some patterning in it. I think it was a Regia. Anyway, I thought, I'm going to knit myself these. But then as I was knitting them, they were just like screaming my sister's name. So that's just how I am with sock knitting. I have lots of my own socks, but I also have made socks with the intention of keeping them for myself, and then I've ended up sending them to somebody else or gifting them to somebody else. But those are the little slippers, and I just think these are so adorable. Again, I know this pattern's been out for a while, but I'm a little bit late to the party, and I just, in December, I think I might have had the pattern in my Ravelry queue and just never actually printed it off, but I changed that because I love these. Okay, and then um, the last project I'm doing right now is Cabin 4's Farmhouse Shawl. I hope this is focused on me. I keep, so um, I keep having the temptation to look over to my right because that's where I have my little screen and I know I have to train myself to look straight ahead. So this is the farmhouse shawl. I made one of these for my sister last year and I loved it. And if I can figure out how to do this, I will actually pop a photo of it in here. The yarn for hers I bought, I doubled it, and I bought enough for me to make one for myself, and that was last year before Christmas, because I gave her, to her I gave her hers for a Christmas gift. So I'm just getting around now to making myself one, and so I don't have a whole lot done yet. It's a very big shawl, and for those of you that haven't made it, you have to. It's like, it is a mindless knit. In fact, I kind of, it's almost like I can only stand to do, I don't know, like at this point, like three, four rows at a time because I start to get bored. But if I was watching a movie or something like that, then I could, I could just sit there and knit on this without even having to think really. Um, it, it's, it's so simple. It would be an awesome beginner's shawl pattern. So, and as it grows and gets bigger, you know, it's going to get even, maybe even more tedious, but again, that it's, this is great. This is a great pattern for when you don't want to have to think that you just want to have your yarn in your hands. And, and that's what, when we have family movie night, which this time of year, we try to do that every Friday night. I always have to have something easy to knit, which is, um, I just can't sit there 
I can't sit there and watch a movie without having something to knit. So this is, I forget what yarn this is. I think it's a UK yarn, and it's a commercial UK yarn, but um, it's a wool and acrylic blend, and it has like these, well look at this big ball. I mean, this is like huge. Yeah, and it's got like the little specks of black and brown in it. So it's kind of tweedy, but not exact. I wouldn't call that exactly tweed. But I wasn't sure. I was a little bit hesitant to buy that, but I knew my sister, I didn't want to be giving her this humongous shawl that she would have to hand wash. Um, so I just went for it. And I read some reviews, and it got good reviews. And she's had hers for over two years, or over a year now, and she wears hers a lot. And it still looks wonderful, like it's not peeling or anything. It's it's really nice. It looks really nice still. So, And it has a very nice drape as well. It's um nice and drapey. It's not stiff, like some commercial yarns can be. So I'm, I was pleased with how it turned out. And so that's what, another reason why I thought, well, if I ever make these for anybody else in the future, that is an affordable option for me um, because it does use a lot of yarn so so that's what I have in the works and I cannot wait till it's done and you know I'm sure that you guys all know what the farmhouse shawl is if not look it up on Ravelry but it's it's nice and big it's like a big warm woolly hug and it has the fringe all over the end and so it's just a lovely lovely simple piece I find that I'm as much as I want to like bright colorful things like I do push myself like these socks are pretty colorful I guess these are pretty colorful too but more of the muted um, I'm not a bright I'm not a neon person not at all and I think those colors are really fun and I know they make some people really happy but I like um, yeah those aren't my colors I'm more of a neutral and then blues greens and some reds some shades of reds so yeah, that is what um, I am working on. And then I just gained up. Now this is kind of bright. Let me zoom. This is Robin's Roost. Oh boy. I don't know. Yeah, it's um, on a sparkle base. So it's got the, the wool, the nylon, and then the uh, Stellina in it. And um, it's beautiful. It's definitely more colorful than what I normally go for because it's got like pops of green and then some like bright yellow in there. It's some sort of summer colorway. But my hubby bought this for me for Christmas last year. And so I thought, well, I need to cast this on because this is a nice, bright, happy color um, to be knitting with when it's kind of, you know, dark and cloudy out. So that's why I decided to go with this one. And I really do like this color a lot. And I think it'll make really nice socks. I'm just going to make plain socks. I'm not going to do a pattern. Um, this will just be another one of those mindless knits that I can take in the car with me or, you know, how when we're watching movies when I need a break from the farmhouse shawl. So that I'll be casting on uh, this week sometime. For this podcast, I just wanted to tell to show you guys what I got from Olivia from This Handmade Life. That's This Handmade Life is her Instagram feed. So back in mid-December, I put out a call on Instagram for someone who wanted to do a mini swap with me. So just like do swap mini skeins um, and then maybe like a tea or some treats. And we would do one for each of the 12 days of Christmas. So, but there's still four days left in that. But Olivia has just knocked it out of the park. Like, no kidding. So she has sent me all this beautiful yarn. And actually, I have one already bought up because I put it into my um, cozy memories blanket already. So she sent me the minis. But she also sent me a bunch of other goodies like this adorable little piecework pin cushion and these magnets that are oops one fail um, Liberty fabric God, get it. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing guys I, I will figure this out um, anyway those and then she sent me a little project bag with her 
work down here. And a little mushroom ornament. I mean, this is just, I can't even believe it, honestly. Like, I am so blown away by her generosity. And honestly, I feel like a big loser because I did not send her a package like this. She's so generous, like so generous, just blown away, like speechless. And it has been so exciting to come down here, um, mostly in the morning, although there have been a few days I haven't gotten down to later in the day. And just to open up the little packages and, and see what's inside of them. I've always wanted to do one of the Christmas Advent uh, calendars, but every year I kind of like, oh, it's so expensive. It'd be really fun, but it's so expensive. And then I put it off, and then I think, oh yeah, I'm going to do it. And then they're sold out, because I wait until the beginning of December. Um, so that's kind of why I put that call out, and it was just, it's been really fun. So it's something I'd like to do in the future. And if I ever exchange with Olivia again, I'm going to seriously up my game. <laughs> okay, so just another yarn, yarny thing. I just want to share with you guys... I recently found a new Indie Dyer, 6 and 7 fiber. I bought something for myself, and my husband ordered something from her Etsy shop um, for me for Christmas. And here's what I had done. Whenever I was like, we were trying to figure out what we were going to get each other for Christmas, and, he, you know, he's a very good gift buyer. He, he is. He got me some amazing things. But I was sending him links to yarn. Most of them were from the 6 and 7 fiber, and I forget the shop owner's name. Darn. Okay, so anyway, he actually ordered me one, and I had no idea because he did it through, he either opened his own Etsy account so he could order it, or he had my mom order it, and then had it delivered to her house, but I'm, I'm not sure what happened. But this is um, a, her worsted weight. It's Soybean based. Oh, I'm sorry. It's DK. 245 yards. And this is Gray Lady. It is so pretty. And I have so much finger weight yarn because I make a lot of socks. And I've been looking at my yarn stash, which is right over here, which is why I look there. And I'm like, man, I'm seriously lacking on like the heavier weight yarn that is just so nice to have on hand for quick projects. So I'm really excited to add this to my stash. And then... The one I bought myself, which I actually bought it before Christmas. This is called her All These Wonders mini set. This is beautiful. Lots of tone, different tones of red, a little bit of brown in there. It's just, see these are the reds that I like. Just gorgeous. I originally bought this to put into my cozy memory blanket, which I have right here. It's growing. Slowly. It's slowly growing, but it is growing. But I got this, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I think I need to make something else. Um, not socks, because honestly, the thought of weaving in all those ends just kind of gives me some anxiety. Only because it's like socks are little and you have to turn them inside out to weave in the ends and then I don't know it's just that's something totally me I'm weird but um so I was watching a podcast or one of Danny from Little Bob and Knits she did a vlogmas and she was doing her advent mini skeins into a cowl called the land of sweets so I thought wow this would be nice and then with some of these yarn skeins that um, Olivia sent me. They're kind of like in the same color scheme. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. I added it to my queue and I'm going to go ahead and buy that pattern. And I think that's what I'm going to cast on for very soon because I just feel like these are so pretty. I want to be able to wear whatever it is, not just put it into my blanket. And I have lots of other minis that I can put into my blanket. And once I use up my, you know, cast on some more socks, I'll have even more, you know how that goes those leftovers we get. So yeah, so that's all for the yarn and the knitting. One more thing, because I know that a lot of knitters are Harry Potter fans. And we just recently watched the Harry Potter movies. Back in November, we started renting them off of Netflix and we went through them all like a 
couple a week as fast as we could send the, the DVD back and get a new one. We just love them so much. Even though they're really long bit movies, we had some really late nights. But the kids love them. Brad and I love them. Um, so Ian requested the books for Christmas. So I found the hardcover books on eBay for a really great price. I wanted hardcover because he reads books over and over again. And I just like hardcover. With certain series that you know are going to be like ones you're going to want to reread, I prefer to put the money in for hardcover rather than paperback. Um, so I found them on eBay. They were like new. I was so pleased. And then my daughter, who is almost 12, she fell in love with the movies and she requested the movies for Christmas. So I also found those. Um, so yeah, we're a big Harry Potter uh, family right now. And we've been trying to classify ourselves into the different <laughs> Hogwarts houses. Um, we haven't figured out that I am a Ravenclaw. My son Ian is a Ravenclaw. Lily is a Gryffindor. And my husband is a Slytherin. Now I know that sounds really bad because a lot of um, evil wizards come out of the Slytherin house. But there's also like... Well, okay, if you have watched the movies, like, I knew all along that Severus Snape, he had to have a good side to him. So, yeah, I'm not even going to say anymore, because I don't want to give anything away if you haven't watched them yet. I know that we are totally behind the times, because those movies have been out for such a long time, but again, like, I'm, I, that's how I am. I typically don't do stuff if everybody else is doing it. Um, but yeah, so, but my husband is like, he's a natural leader. Um, he knows what he's, what, like, he's just a Slytherin. And I don't mean that in a, like, derogatory way, but anyway, so we have ourselves classified now. And now I really want, like, to buy Harry Potter yarn, because I know a lot of indie dyers do Harry Potter clubs, and I want a mug. Yeah, I'm just, I can't even believe it, actually, because I usually am so not jumping on bandwagons, but I'm totally on the bandwagon. But anyway, so I am going to start reading the series. My son, who got these books on Christmas, is already almost done with the fourth one. He is a rabid reader. He reads like crazy and fast, and I love to read. Um, so some of my goals, like I'm setting goals for 2018, not resolutions, but just like some goals, and I'm going to set them in various aspects of my life, like knitting and homeschooling and um, personal development, which I would put reading underneath that. Um, spiritual development. So I'm kind of like doing, ca I'm categorizing my goals, but one of my goals is to read this series this, this coming year. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited because I know the movies were awesome. The books are going to be even more so because you know, movies, they leave out a lot of details, but yeah, so this is what is going to be my first read of 2018. So I am looking forward to that. And I think that's all I have for you today. I wanted to just do a short little video and to just kind of get my feet wet and see how this goes. And now I'm going to have to enter the world of editing. I love taking still photos and I've edited those a lot and I have a program for that, but I have never edited a video. So that should be interesting. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm thankful that you guys came and watched this and I, um, I'm looking forward to meeting more people through podcasting and I love watching other people's podcasts I think they're so much fun and um, that's what I usually do I t I really don't watch television um, we don't even have like cable or anything we, we get stuff off of Netflix but normally what I usually do if I'm gonna watch something is I'll put my earbuds in and I will sit there and knit and watch a podcast on my phone my husband loves action movies so he usually is sitting in our bedroom. We have like two chairs, two comfy chairs, and an end table between them. And he sits in the one and he watches his adventurous, crazy action movies that I don't like to watch. And I sit in my other chair with my knitting and I watch some very lovely ladies and their podcasts, their knitting podcasts. And they're always so inspiring. So that is what I have for you today. Um, this is January 1st, 2018. It's crazy. It's a new year. So, um, I, you know, I pray you have a great first week of January and we shall see you soon.